Quick intro on the on the new chart cards uh, on the Vivo connection with the SPFX. Uh, starting from the SPFX recap, a bit about what is Vivo connection and also what are we looking into doing with this chart card, and also a bit of a sneak peek on the future uh, on some pictures which you probably well I know that you haven't seen them because I captured them uh, earlier today. Now, quick recap on the SharePoint framework and SPFX. This is uh, the most widely used extensibility platform in Microsoft 365, and we keep on evolving that. There's going to be awesome news in Orlando and build. Uh, and a lot of other investments in the age of AI and Copilot also in the pipeline. Now, we started SharePoint Framework back in 2016 uh, with SharePoint, then it extended to Teams, then it extended to Microsoft Viva, then it extended to Outlook and Microsoft 365 AMP, and it has a lot of, lot of benefits. Now, if you have an existing website and a service and a SaaS service, you probably want to use that service and surface that inside of the Microsoft 365. But SPFX gives you the option of automatically hosting the extensibility. So you don't have to worry about hosting anything in Azure unless you want to. Um, and of course, you can with the SPFX, you can still call Azure hosted APIs and all of that stuff uh, with a single sign-on. Now, the Viva connection uh, is a relatively, relatively new uh, thing, and there's a lot of, lot of new features and capabilities in Viva connection. 3.0 was rolling out actually earlier this year uh, with, with the late, uh, really great capabilities on the branding side, uh, but it's really intended to be the, the consistent look and feel of accessing tools and apps uh, within your company, accessing the company announcements and, and com com corporate communications and the relevant tools. So it doesn't matter are you using a tablet or a mobile or a desktop, you will always find the same tools using them, the, the dashboard which has been personalized to you. And we can build multiple dashboards per company. Uh, you can personalize individual pass dashboards and individual cards and all of that stuff. So there's a lot of, lot of flexibility uh, within the product. Now, uh, as mentioned, uh, it actually has three different uh, experiences. Um, and um, in the desktop, we have the top hero section, which is for corporate communications and news. And there are plans to actually introduce that also in a mobile and tablet. Uh, it's still currently it's in the car inside of the cards, but uh, this is going to be a more specific corporate communication. News, so that's being considered. On the desktop side, uh, you can also see the dashboard. You can see the resources and all of that stuff. You can access, of course, same dashboard and cards and capabilities in a mobile or in a tablet really making it that kind of a one-stop shop for accessing all of the relevant information within your company. And of course, it is fully branded. So you can customize that based on your company branding, and you can still access your SharePoint sites and portals and all of that's behind the scenes through these cards and through the links within the Viva Connection. That's kind of the intention of Viva Connection. And just to kind of show you the same uh, Viva Connection dashboard and a design or a layout uh, in a three, four, five difference, one, two, three, four, five, five different brand so that's definitely supported and you can adjust that based on your company uh, branding. Viva Connection is, is a platform uh, and you can extend to Viva Connection by using a SharePoint framework, building this ACES and ACE cards, which is the topic of today. We're going to talk about the chart card option and what does it actually mean. And then, of course, from the cards, you can show relevant information. There was a, just as today, uh, we were recording a partner story where um, their employees need to submit every single day their time uh, times what they've been working rather than going to complex SAP or Oracle systems and trying to figure out on how on earth what I need to submit again on these things, you can create a simple uh, adaptive card powered uh, view, which is really simple to fill in and submit. And all of that is getting then uh, submitted to the more complex and more comprehensive uh, tooling. That's kind of the idea of this AC. So you can build this actionable quick links and quick actions directly within the Viva Connection card without moving to that other application. Because again, then you avoid that context switching, you are, will be still in the corporate uh, branding and, and the Viva Connection experience. You can also build these cards uh, or experiences using bot powered uh, ACs, and this is a relatively new thing and mainly targeted for any ISVs who are already invested in the bot powered uh, capabilities in the Microsoft Teams, so they can actually make those bots to talk to Viva Connection as well uh, quite easily, and then they can provide uh, different experiences. Pretty cool as well. And then underneath here, all we're using Graph APIs and a lot of options available to get started. Now, with 1.19,
simple. It's somewhat limited, um, and it's only one chart card type. I'm going to come back on future uh, plans on this in a second, but you can already see different flexibility and information directly within a dashboard. So on the right side, we can see a example dashboard within this imaginary company where we are showing monthly sales information for a specific colors or models or types or products, whatever it is, and then the stock price directly within a chart. So you don't have to click the card or click and uh, move to another nowhere else. You can directly see the relevant information uh, within that card view uh, where we're seeing all of those dashboards available. Uh, the Chart card option uh, is uh, part of SPFX 1.19, as mentioned. Uh, ETA for GA is around May 2024. That is subject to change. We're heading pretty soon to release candidate in 1.19 because we're trying to get a bit more frequent builds with SharePoint frameworks rather than build it waiting too long of getting new stuff available. Now, the chart card gives you the option of having one to three charts directly drawn uh, within the chart. I'm going to show you this one in practice uh, in the live demo because we do have time for that. I'm talking clearly way too fast. Um, and you can control, of course, the chart metrics, colors, and details, how you're going to present them uh, within the card. And more charting options uh, for the Vivo connection is in the roadmap. I'm going to give you some teasers on that one uh, after the demo. But let's do a quick recap on, on how do we actually get started. Uh, not recap, or learning, look on how to get started on building first chart card experience for your connection. Now, first of all, uh, what I have uh, here is an environment uh, where, let me actually do this this way, G, and then uh, depth. Writing is so hard when somebody is looking at what you're writing, which is quite often the case when you are presenting something in community call. Now, what I'm doing here is basically showing you that I have a SharePoint Framework 1.19 beta zero uh, installed within my global NPM cache and a lot of other stuff as well. But the first one in top is showing you what is the right version. And when I have that one installed, uh, it gives me a new option uh, in the SharePoint Framework Human Generator. So as I start creating my solution, um, in this case, I'm not going to really create a solution fully today. Uh, I have it created before just to save some time, but I can create the solution. I can select an adaptive card extension, and then we can actually see the adaptive card visualization template as a preview option uh, available. And that will give us the starting point for having that data visualization card or a chart card uh, uh, output. Now, when I select that one, we will then create and scaffold the project, create the solution, all of that stuff, which I'm not going to do now because I did it a bit before. I wanted to save some time. So here's my chart demo. Uh, we haven't done anything more than for this one than getting it out from the Yeoman generator. Uh, and it's basically the similar SharePoint framework solution as any SharePoint framework solution, because that's that's the beauty of SharePoint framework. Um, you can actually implement multiple extensibilities across multiple products. Uh, using the same tech, same tooling, same automation and all of that, which is really, really cool. Now, in our case, we just rendered or created a card, which is adapted card sales card in this case. And we kind of focus on the card view, which is the one which is now as I will provide it as a new option. Before I actually even show you how it's implemented, let me do a card serve and no, no, no browser. Um, and that's basically is serving this SharePoint framework to be shown uh, in the demo environment. Uh, so this is what you're getting uh, directly uh, from uh, the scaffolding. Let's go to quickly here, double checking that it's actually uh, running. Yeah, everything is running. And then let me go to the workbench. Workbench is the location where developers can test directly within a SharePoint Online uh, how their extensibility works, even though run, they're running stuff locally, which is pretty cool. Um, if you're not, if you are familiar or not familiar with the things. So now, if I click here, I can see the sales card, and there's my sales card uh, getting rendered. Now, the sales card renders um, a white looking card in here. I can, of course, modify the logo. I can modify the text, all of that stuff. And renders a bit different looking uh, in a small. If I click preview, we can see that it's squeezed a bit, but still the relevant information is present uh, uh, on the card. And let's go like edit, uh, and the same card can be rendered. Oop, not there. I was trying to do this. Typically, you'll probably use a bit longer uh, rendering style. That does uh, refresh. There we go. Excellent. Now it refreshes the card rendering. There we go. 
So that's basically the, the typical experience which you get when you scaffold the solution. You can then uh, control the dates, you can control the colors, you can control the text, what is being processed and the numbers and so the scale of the chart. And let's do that. So let's, because we do have plenty of time, let's actually do a small modifications to our solution, which is waiting in here. Here we go. I'm going to pause the coach. Uh, let's just clear up that one. Let me uh, get rid of the terminal for now, uh, and let's have a look on how does the card chart look, chart card, card chart, chart card, card, I don't know, chart card uh, in Viva Connection look like. So basic idea here is that you are defining the series of data. So the, the date and the number, and the date and the number. So basically this is the series which we will eventually draw directly within a chart. And then uh, in our output, uh, which is super, super simple, we're basically saying, hey, this is a line chart card view. And in the line chart card view, we will have a one series uh, which will be rendered. Uh, and the last data point label is 3.1K. Now, what is that 3.1K? Well, that's basically the text what we're going to see here. That could be saying, let's say a product name, it could be saying a, a, a type name, whatever you want to actually written there uh, could be the indication so that people know what that test means. It could be a number, it could be text, uh, so anything works. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, and uh, for all of these charts, uh, I can absolutely modify this to have a color uh, as well. Uh, it is not a mandatory thing, but I can define uh, the color uh, in a hexadecimal value, um, so I can change the things. So let's do, uh let's do a red one for example in here is that a red one that is red one cool now if i want to have multiple charts yes we can absolutely do that uh, i will copy a bit uh, code from another example uh, because it's just easier and faster for me to do now you can you can already if you're super quick on the code you can see that the series uh, is actually an array of JSON. It's a JSON array because we can see that that is a one object and if we do a comma and, and another and add another one and another one that actually is uh, how we add those additional things in, in the, the, the uh, rendering logic. So let me do that. Let me draw a or include a series data too. So we have a series data. I will add another data points uh, from, let's say that this is coming from SAP sales system, whatever it is, and let me actually add a series data tree as well, because why not? We have a lot of data available, and this could be dynamically coming from, again, from any external system connected. You can easily hit an endpoint, uh, APIs, a SharePoint list where you uh, replicate data using Power Automate, a lot of, lot of uh, infinite options available for you where the data is coming from. Of course, it would not be written in the code like we're doing here. And but this is only to demonstrate the UX capabilities within the chart card. So three different lines, three uh, series two, data series uh, two and three and four. Now that's four already, three different charts. So three is supported, four is not supported. So that's a good thing to know as well. So now how do we then add those additional uh, fellows in is basically we add a additional entry. You can again see that there's a one entry over there which ends on that one. And then we are adding a new entry uh, right after that. So you can actually just copy, for example, this one uh, and add it over there. And we are looking into drawing another chart uh, series. So let's call it series data two, because that was again, the, the collection in here for the data points. And let's set that a different color. I'm just going to grab a color from my uh, the sample. There we go. And let's add the final point. I think it's for 5.5K. Let's double check that it's 4.5. Yes, it is 4,500. There we go. And then uh, let's add a third option in here as well. Uh, so we can see how it actually renders and draws a tree chart uh, in here. And that was series number data three. And we could do here 0.4K is apparently the last value on that one. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Let's double check. Yes, 400 is 0.4K. And let's give it another color so we can easily see how it looks like. Excellent. We're good to go. Data is looking good. Uh, let me actually get the terminal back online. Let me do here a uh, call absurd de no browser. And magical, magical, magical. And I will go to the browser. Magic, 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 compiles, 
trans compiles the TypeScript to the JavaScript, then host is the host stat on uh, localhost, and I will go here. Let's throw that away. Let's do a refresh, and we can see three charts, unless I did a typo as I was writing the code. But if we go to the sales now, yay, we can see three charts. And again, it's completely up to us what are the final things and text. This could be just as well. We can actually probably see that pretty much live if I do the update. So I could do something like uh, SPFX and saving. We still got a refresh over there. And let me go to the chart in here. Good to know that you can actually absolutely do this. And it says SPFX. Cool. Now, one thing to notice here uh, is that if you uh, have the three chart lines in the cart and you squeeze this to be a one car, one uh, sized or a smaller one, it actually only draws one line. So it's only going to draw one line. So that is a design limitation within the carts. Uh, so it doesn't accept you to have multiple uh, lines because it's so small. But, uh, but then if I now extend this to be a bit wider, uh, it will again, of course, draw all of the three ones. Now it's squeezed. I need to refresh refresh there we go now it's in, in the normal mode for rendering that and again i can definitely change the logos and all of that stuff as needed and the data formats and all of that stuff so that's really really cool so that's chart cart which is part of the 1.19 uh, and of course the idea here is that you will have something like a a real company uh, dashboard where you can then draw something like monthly sales and the stock price which you're updating uh, for the people to know as they're using the portal so uh, pretty cool stuff um, and you can imagine that you have relevant business information directly in here and then when you click the card it will redirect you to the power bi but again you will be a viva connection with viva connection you are in the context of the work you're in the context of teams you don't have to do that context switching unless you're interested on in deep diving on the data click the card redirect to the power bi or whatever is your system where the data is coming from and then you can deep dive on the data but for the basic information you can simply see that relevant information directly in dashboard that's really the idea cool now let me go back on the slides uh, uh there we go and do a quick preview on the things what we are currently working on. So this work has started uh, actually, I think this week or previous week, uh, but we're looking into introducing also a pie chart and a donut chart. These are directly Figma pictures and design pictures from our design team as they are providing them to the uh, developer team and engineering team to implement that. This is giving you some sort of an idea of the different card types, which will be initially available. So chart card, as part of 1.19. And you can imagine that donut and pie charts are coming as part of the 1.20 uh, of SPFX uh, within a few months uh, or in roughly in that time frame. But that's what the chart cards is all about. Uh, and yes, donuts, good, good jokes on the on the chat for sure. Uh, but uh, this is relevant information. You can imagine again, if I flip back on the dashboard, you can then build a pretty cool looking dashboard with the relevant data, uh, which you can just see the overview of information in here without moving away from corporate communications and other relevant data within your company. But if you need to deep dive on the data or do some operations for the data, click the card, redirected operations and you'll be good to go. That's kind of the idea. Cool.